हेलो गाइस, आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द ऑप्टिकल कम्युनिकेशन टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द लाइट एमिटिंग डायोड इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो आल्सो वी टॉक्ड अबाउट द एलईडी, बट टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक इन डिटेल अबाउट द रेडिएशन मैकेनिज्म how with the help of the emissions from the higher energy state to the lower energy state we are getting the emissions which are the photon emissions and due to which light is emitted from the led so we are going to see in detail analysis of the photon emissions from the led and after that we are going to see the different types of semiconductors the types of emissions itself and the type of recombinations as well so these are the very important topics and in this way this video becomes really important and i hope all of you have watched the previous video because the basis is from that video only i hope if you have still not watched it you will be going and watching it first and then you will be coming to watch this video so let's start our topic of the day so first of all we are going to talk about the radiation mechanism so how the led is going to radiate for that we should understand the energy band diagram so in the previous video also i talked about this term but today we are going to see in detail how with the help of energy band diagram we can understand different types of material so we have different type of material like the insulators then we have the metals and then or then we have the conductors and then we have the semiconductors so how i have differentiated the insulators from the conductors and then the semiconductors all of them are different on the basis of the energy band diagram so the insulators are having the energy band or the energy gap in between the two energy bands to be greater than 5 electron volt and due to which the electrons from the valence band will not be able to reach the conduction band and when the electrons doesn't reach the conduction band it won't be in the free state and due to which the insulators won't be conducting this is the reason the insulators are having high resistance now coming to the conductors the conductors are having the valence band and the conduction band which are overlapped there is zero energy gap in between the valence and the conduction band and due to which the room temperature also the conductors are conducting this is a very important property about the conductors right so now coming to the semiconductors semiconductors are having the energy gap in between the two valence bands the valence band and the conduction band to be lesser than 5 electron volt so when the energy gap between the two bands is lesser than 5 electron volt on higher temperature or on the application of some outside energy the electrons can go from the valence band up to the conduction band and when they reach the conduction band they will be in the free energy state and due to which it will be in the conduction mode and this is how i can control the conductivity of the semiconductor but on the other hand i cannot control the conductivity of my insulator or the metals or the conductors right because the insulators won't be conducting the conductors will always be conducting but the semiconductors are the materials whose conductivity i can control so this is the reason semiconductors becomes very important and led is also made up of semiconductors i hope you got the reason why i have chosen the semiconductors because it will be behaving like an optical source the optical source should be providing the output in accordance to the information the input information should change the characteristics of the source now when the conductivity of the semiconductor is changed in accordance to the input message signal i can get the information also in accordance to the input message signal uh, which is output from the semiconductor right if i choose insulator if i choose the conductor i won't be getting the information in accordance to the message signal because the conductivity won't be varying according to the message signal 
So I hope you got the basic reason why I am choosing the semiconductor. So light sources are fabricated from the semiconductors and the semiconductor material is suitable for use in the optical communication. Okay, so now here the electrons will be reaching to the conduction band from the valence band. So when the electron is reaching to the conduction band, it will be leaving a hole here in the valence band. So when electrons goes away, it leaves holes in place of it. So now at the higher energy state, that is E2, even is the lower energy state and E, E2 E1 is lower energy state, E2 is high energy state. Right, so when the electrons from the higher energy state that is E2 will be coming to the E1, there would be change in the energy. Right, so why this electron from the valence band went to the conduction band when the difference was there in the energies? The electron from the valence band went to the conduction band because it absorbed the energy as the heat. Okay, so when the heat energy was absorbed by the electron, its energy becomes high and it goes to the higher energy state. But when this same electron comes to the lower energy state, because there is an energy gap, so because I know the law of conservation of energy, energy can never be created, it can never be destroyed. So when this electron comes down, there would be an emission. Also this electron is going to recombine with the hole, so recombination will be taking place. So based upon this recombination, I will be getting a photon which is emitted from this LED. Okay, so the basis is this recombination. You must understand what all things are happening and how the recombination is taking place which is emitting the photon. Okay, so now energy band diagram is used to study the different materials. If I have the conductor, if I have insulator, if I have semiconductor, I can use the energy band diagram to denote the different properties of the different materials because the different materials will be having the different band gap energy. Now what is band gap energy? The energy between the two states, the higher energy state and the lower energy state. The energy between E1 and E2. So E2 minus E1 would be the band gap energy. So here I can write down it E2 minus E1 to be equal to Eg. Okay, so band gap energy is represented by Eg. It is equal to the difference between two energy states E1 and E2. So when Eg is lesser than 5 electron volt, I can classify my material as a semiconductor. So band gap determines the type of material, hence it is proved. So electrons and holes are recombining to release the energy. I hope you understood how I explained the basis is a recombination to release the photon and to release the energy as well. So now if the energy is released, the emission will be taking place of the photon. Energy is released in the form of photon and this we are calling it as an em emission. So emission when it is taking place we have two types of emission. First is spontaneous emission and second is stimulated emission. So as the name suggests, spontaneous means which is occurring at a spontaneous time due to some random movements of the electron. Randomly electron will be moving from the valence band to the conduction band and again randomly it will be coming back from the conduction band to the valence band. And when it is coming from the higher energy state to the lower energy state is going to emit the photon. So this is my spontaneous emission. Now coming to the stimulated emission. What is stimulated emission? In the stimulated emission, we have some energy, the input energy. So I am going to apply some input energy. This input energy can be in the form of heat or it can be in the form of light energy as well. So I am sending some energy which is equal to the band gap energy. So this energy E is equal to Eg. So when I apply this energy, so it can be a photon energy as well as I told you. So here let's suppose this is a photon. So when a photon is applied here, the electron 
from the valence band will move to the conduction band right because of this energy the electron is moving from the valence to the conduction band and because the conduction band is not a stable state this electron will again try to come back to the valence band and when it comes back to the valence band a second photon is released so first photon that i has sent was released plus because of this electron went to the lower energy state i had the second photon which is also released this is called stimulated emission i hope you understood the difference between the two so now when this emission will be happening recombination will be happening recombination is the basis of the emission so there are two types of recombination first is radiative recombination and the second is non radiative recombination as the name suggests radiative recombination means the recombination which is resulting in the form of release of a photon or which is going to give me the emissions okay so emissions are in the form of light energy only so when the emissions are in the form of photons only or i am getting the light energy as the emissions as the output of the recombination of the electron and the hole i will be calling it as the radiative recombination on the other hand the non -radi radiative recombination would be the recombination which is not giving the photon or the light energy as the output of the recombination as the emission we are having the heat energy which is emitted out of the led so i don't want heat energy i want only the light energy to be emitted out and for that only the radiative recombination becomes our desirable recombination so i want a material in which i will be having more of radiative recombination and lesser of non radiative recombination so the ideal material will be having the 100% radiative recombination and 0% non radiative recombination can it happen so practically it cannot happen and practically we will not be getting only radiative recombination so i have to denote the parameter which is called the efficiency efficiency is denoted by the radiative recombination or rr upon rr plus r and r that is the total recombination so i can call it as rr upon rt the radiative recombination upon the total recombination and this is how i can find out the efficiency okay so the total recombination is the sum of radiative recombination and the non radiative recombination i want to choose a material in which i can decrease the non radiative recombination so both type of recombination can happen inside the semiconductor so now my task is to choose the semiconductor in which the red non radiative recombination would be lesser radiative recombination would be higher so the optical source will be having the number of radiative component which are dominant okay non radiative components should be submissive and we will be having most of the components as the radiative component only and then only i can call it as the light source it is only that time it is acting as a light source so now the semiconductor if it has to behave as a light source it will be having more of radiative component it will be providing a photon for each and every recombination or i can say practically for most of the recombination i will be getting photon then the semiconductor will be acting as a light source i hope you understood it so now coming to the two types of semiconductors first is direct band gap semiconductor then we have indirect band gap semiconductor so now the valence band and the conduction band are not very straight okay so you can see this is my valence band this is my conduction band now when the electron is coming from the conduction band from the lowest energy of the conduction band it will be coming to the highest energy of the valence band then it is called the direct band gap semiconductor so now in the direct band gap semiconductors the light is emitted when the electron is coming from the conduction band to the valence band or when the electron goes down to the nearest valence band state the light energy is released so the example of the indirect 
band gap is germanium and the silicon whereas the example of direct band gap is gallium arsenide so this is the direct band gap dbg i am writing gallium arsenide because here a lot of photons are released the gallium arsenide is preferred now if i talk about the germanium and the silicon the germanium is having the energy gap or the band gap to be equal to 0.7 electron volt and the silicon is having the band gap nearly equal to 1.1 electron volt so both of them are indirect band gap semiconductors so i will be writing in front of them i d b g so this is my indirect band gap okay so i d b g so now the germanium and the silicon will be having the conduction band and the valence band this is my conduction band this is my valence band so the lowest portion of the conduction band is not superimposed with the highest portion of the valence band here the electron will move to a stable state over here so first this electron is coming to this point which is stable state and from here it will be coming to the valence band and in this manner the heat energy is released most of the energy is released as, as the heat in the indirect band gap semiconductors so this is a disadvantage we are not getting a lot of photons and in this manner i can say germanium and the silicon directly cannot be used as the semiconductor material for the led manufacturing i can use the gallium arsenide for the manufacturing of the leds only so this is a very important question this is a very important reason why i am using the gallium arsenide mostly or its different types as well so now coming to a phenomena which is called electroluminescence now in the recombination what was happening electron was recombining with the hole so again when the electron and hole recombines light energy is released in the form of photon and this phenomena is termed as electroluminescence which is the principle behind the light emitted from the led so when you are asked about the principle for the light emitted from the led or how the led is working you have to tell in detail how all of these things are happening okay so now the output light from the led will be depending upon first the band gap energy the eg obviously the band gap energy is directly proportional to the energy which is released the band gap energy eg is equal to released energy er i am talking about the released energy as er so now the released energy when the, all of the energy is released in the form of light so i can classify the energy as h nu where h is the planck's constant 6.626 into 10 raised to power minus 34 joule second is the planck's constant which is multiplied with the frequency so if i change er then the frequency will be changed and i can write it as hc upon lambda and when the frequency is going to change both of these are constant the lambda will be changing so when the er is changing the lambda will be changing so i can say the wavelength of the emitted light will be depending upon the energy which is released so band gap energy is directly proportional to the output radiation okay so the output radiation's wavelength is proportional to the band gap energy so first of all it depends upon the band gap energy and second depends upon the type of dopants that is used as well as the concentration of the dopant if i make the semiconductor it will be made of pnn type of junction so the pnn type of junction will be made with the help of some dopants and the amount of dopants used type of dopant used will be changing the type of photons that is released so if suitable materials can be found out in which light is emitted in the visible or the infrared region from where i started the discussion about the led so we have different material like the gallium arsenide aluminum gallium arsenide indium phosphide indium gallium arsenide phosphide indium gallium arsenide so all of them are having their different advantages i have already covered the advantages of using the different material as a light source in the previous video i hope you all have watched it so i hope you understood all of the things that i have discussed in this video if you have any doubt regarding to the any concept that i have discussed today so you can put the doubt in the comment and i will be trying to resolve your doubt as soon as possible i hope you like this session if you like it please push the like button subscribe to the channel share it with your friends and give me your feedback thank you so much